Hello everyone, welcome back to Learning Finance. In today's video guys, I'm gonna explain you why I bought um, planes, all American pipelines. And so if you're interested and if you like the video, leave a like and subscribe, why not? Let's begin. All right, so as we all know right now, there is a a strong oil crisis okay because of this lockdown no one wants oil and we have this situation which is called super contango which is basically it's pretty simple okay a contango situation is quite normal in commodities because basically a, a price of a commodity today it should be less than a price of a commodity in the future so one two three four five months why because of a lot of things because of risk because of storage costs and things like that but in this case we are in a super contango what that means is that the price of today it's a lot lower than the price of two, one month two three four months in the future okay and this is something in the futures market actually you can exploit to, to make there are a lot of strategies in, to make money with this thing and i think the quants are making money right now <laughs> anyway we we have seen that the oil price became negative so basically right now no demand for crude oil but there is one thing what is i mean there is no demand to use the oil but there is a strong demand to keep the oil in in places okay they are uh, the, the hand for oil storage space is on here so basically everyone is looking for storages okay so to place to store the oil why because no one is using it and uh, but like in the US they are buying I mean they, they are filling up their reserves with oil okay so they need place they need rooms to storage the oil and as we can see also here why oil storage is important <coughs> see it has created an extreme demand shock in energy market with storage space both onshore and offshore quickly filling up so what this means is that there is no more space to storage the oil and that means there is a strong demand for oil storages and so as always there's the price of storages is gonna go up okay and that's what basically happened I don't know if you if you have seen uh, around those days but they are they are using tankers to store the, the oil okay so they are storing the oil in the sea inside the, sh the ships that means if you're, they are doing that that means that on the ground on the, they are already full okay so how can we i was thinking how can we exploit this situation to make some money and i was looking around and there are a lot of companies in the oil industry with, that are full of debt and things like that they are not i mean they are really really risky but I think that, I mean, some of them, well, why not? And I was looking around and I saw this one, guys. Planes, All-American Pipeline, which I know probably you heard about this because has been completely destroyed in the stock market during February and March when I bought it. And... Anyway, why American pipelines? Well, those guys, they are not oil producers, okay? They are 
basically their business is to make money with services related to oil so what they do they do transportation with pipelines and look what we have here they do facilities so they provide storage room for oil and how they provide it with the facilities or facilities segment operation generally consists of fee-based activities associated with the providing storage terminaling and through services primarily for crude oil okay so those guys right now they are actually making money providing storage for oil and as I said before there is no more room for for oil so those fees are gonna go up and so that's that was quite interesting okay and I said well let's take a look let's take a look at the fundamentals and the balance sheet and what we have we have uh, now ticker PAA now in 2020 the higher price was 19.39 dollars <laughs> and look what we have here the lower price three dollars with a maximum drop of almost 85 percent this is crazy okay and pay attention to it now even if the oil crisis we have it right now i mean the the, the top of the oil crisis we are having it right now with the negative future right now middle of april this thing here has happened in at the beginning of March okay so the stock the oil stocks are actually they have anticipated a lot what has what has happened today and these stocks this stock here right now guys is going up for yeah it's going up like it's an entire month that is going up actually and it's go has gone up a lot okay so let's see to do that I, I just I took the last uh, the, the last quarter of 2019 just to have an idea on how the firm has gone through the um, the crisis okay so those are in million here we have a, a, a revenue of 33.7 billion uh, cost of revenue and the gross profit okay now let's see the this is pretty important now keep in mind one thing oil related company especially this is typical of industrial companies they don't have much cash in their balance sheets okay because this is typical of industrials they they don't keep cash they they have those huge plants and basically it's typical they, they just use debt and they are not very liquid okay it's an industrial business and usually they have a lot of asset in plants and things like that but what's important to understand the health of a company is in this case is very important this one total current assets 4.612 billion and current liabilities 5 billion current ratio 0 0.92 which is not perfect should be at least one but you know it's not even too bad because it's almost one and 
I think that, that means that basically they are almost able to cover all the current liabilities with all the current assets. Okay, so this is not super good, but you know, it's just, yeah, not bad. Total asset, this is, is this in this case, things are getting better, okay, because total asset 28.7 billion total liabilities 15.42 billion now we have a stockholder equity which is like total asset minus total liabilities of 13 billion and this is the ratio guys in this case we have almost a ratio of 2 1.85 ratio of total asset divided by total liabilities and you know what if they are not able to pay this because of bad times they are probably gonna be able to sell or to make some money for those assets to cover this if they need it but i'm gonna explain you soon that probably they don't need it right now because remember the storage business I think that, well, okay, there is a crisis, but those guys here, because of the storage fact, they are not gonna get hit so strongly. Like, for example, probably other businesses related to the production of the oil, okay? So, let's continue. Um, margins are not as good, but this is because usually the the industry of oil they have those they have a lot of costs to keep anyway operating margin 5.9 around 6 that's not too bad i mean yeah not super good but not too bad anyway in this case yeah now, here we have a valuation, considering the price of yesterday, which was like around $7.18, <clears throat> we had a valuation of the business of $5.21 billion. Uh, just a quick book to value ratio with this thing, it means that basically we are taking the stockholder equity and we take the valuation and we do the valuation divided by the stockholder equity and we get this number 0 0.395 what does it mean it means that right now at this price if you buy the entire business in the market and you sell the assets of the business you sell everything you are actually making money because the business valuation right now in the market is less than the, the value of the total assets minus total liabilities, okay? And what is the share price if the, of the assets? Asset minus, minus liability share price is around $18.10. Okay, this is pretty simple. You just take this number here divided by um, 729 millions of shares outstanding. And that's the number you get. That's the price you get. Just to have an idea. Uh, book to value. As I said before, right now at this price, we are having a 60% discount. Now, I bought this stock at a price, a medium, an average price of $5.14. So, at that time, at that price, the valuation of the company was $3.7 billion and the book to value was even lower, 0.28 discount price of minus almost 72 percent related to this analysis now those are not mm, perfect numbers i mean this is just to have an idea okay 
uh, just to take some numbers and trying to understand what's going on. But this is not all because I like to. I also did a, an analysis on free cash flows of the company, and here we are. So, this is a scenario, okay? It's pretty, I mean, it's a pretty absolutely not optimistic scenario, okay? Because I consider, okay, 2020, this is, this is the um, free cash flow of 2019. Now, 2020, let's say in December, I said, well, you know what? Let's not consider the storage costs those those things let's say that the the business is losing money it's losing 400 million dollar from i mean the difference here from the previous cash flow to the the this cash flow it's like a minus 140 percent it's huge okay it's huge it's very conservative this view okay in terms of theoretical price i mean this is a, a bad scenario okay a really bad scenario and i said well you know what let's also consider that in 2021 they are making zero zero free cash flow so it's like earnings zero zero free cash flow here they have a loss a huge loss a previous uh, of course if also if you consider it with the previous year and in 2021, zero, zero free cash flow. And from 2022, they are gonna, I said, well, let's say they're gonna start to make some money again. Some money, which is like the half of what they were doing before, okay? And this is gonna grow up around 15% per year. And we arrive in 2025, which in, 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 even five years later, five and a half years later, I consider it the, the scenario when, where they are not able to make the same money as they were doing, as they were making before, okay? So a really bad scenario. And um, a terminal value, which I consider this one, uh, with a growth rate of 5% per year. So very low growth rate. And uh, a, a risk, the risk of the, the business as a, as a VAC, I took 20%, which is really high, okay? Now, when we do cash flows, we have the present value. Now, for the cash flows, I, I just, I use it, uh, a 20% rate for the first two years, which is a, a really, really, really risky, and a rate around 15% for the other years, which is the double of what is required by the market, which is around 8%. And here is what we have, guys. We have a theoretical price of 6.52% dollars and so i bought at 5.14 dollars which is considering this bad scenario it's a discount of minus 21.2 percent okay now if we consider that well you know what with this cash with this storage fees they are going to be able to uh, cover this loss okay they are not gonna have a loss like as big they are gonna say let's say that this year they're gonna make zero boom and well and let's say in 2020 they are not gonna make zero they are gonna make very low quantity but not zero let's say 200 million this is this is going a, a real bit better scenario okay and let's see what we have. We have a, a, a theoretical price of 7.23, which is con considering where I bought, considering the fact that I bought at $5.14, I bought at around 29% of discount. 
So that's why I bought planes, all American pipelines. And right now I am around a 40% in profit and I'm pretty happy with that. And I think I'm going to continue to hold it for, I don't know, the next year, the next couple of years, of course. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this with this investment and let's see how it goes guys now I hope you find this video helpful and leave a like uh, subscribe okay I'm gonna upload new videos on different stocks and I hope you liked it uh, so okay have a nice day guys see you soon bye